my name is Chris Langdon. I'm a professor with the Coastal Oregon Marine Experiment Station that's based at the Hatfield Marine Science Center in Newport, Oregon. And uh, the reason I got interested in oysters was my father loved eating them. And he sent me off on this trail of discovery that has occupied most of my research career. So here at the Hatfield Center, I study aquaculture, particularly of oysters and seaweed. And we've been rearing oysters here for uh, at least 37 years, so a long time. And we've had actually a long history of growing oysters on the West Coast. Many tourists love eating a, a plate of oysters, fresh on the half shell, fried or whatever. And it's really just part of the experience of visiting the coast of Oregon. Oysters have a dockside value of about 80 to 90 million dollars a year. So it's quite a big industry and thousands of people are dependent on that industry for their livelihood. Oysters actually have a very interesting life cycle. Uh, they have a planktonic stage where larvae are free swimming and then they feed on microalgae for a period of two to three weeks. They then undergo a process of settlement and metamorphosis where they attach to hard substrates usually oyster shell or even pieces of wood. And then they undergo a transformation where the whole body structure and organs change and they become baby oysters and eventually grow to the oysters that we all recognize on our dinner plates. In hatcheries, larval oysters are cared for during the first few weeks of their lives by the hatchery operator. And the Whisker Creek hatchery here in Central Oregon coast is the state's only major hatchery and it's really important because it supplies something called seed to lots of small farmers along the coast. Uh, the seed are called eyed larvae that are larvae that are ready to metamorphose and settle and then farmers receive the seed and they grow them on their farms until they reach a size where they can harvest them for sale. So back in uh, 2007 all of a sudden, larval production at Whiskey Creek was hit very hard. Uh, larvae were dying at a much higher rate than usual, and they were able to produce only about half the seed they normally produced each year. The shells of the larvae were deformed. At the same time, other hatcheries on the West Coast were reporting problems, and there were problems you know, with larval production from wild populations in Willapa Bay and Puget Sound. Initially, we thought it was due to a bacterial pathogen. When we worked to exclude this pathogen, it turned out that it helped, but it didn't solve the problem. Uh, eventually, in desperation, I went to see some colleagues of mine on the main campus, uh, Burke Hales and George Wargbusser, who specialize in seawater chemistry. And what we know about ocean water is that it absorbs carbon dioxide from the air and that lowers the pH or, become, or the seawater becomes more acidified. This makes it harder for larval oysters to grow because their shells are composed of a form of calcium carbonate called aragonite. It turned out that the water chemistry in the Pacific Northwest was changing. Alan Barton, manager of the Whiskey Creek Hatchery, noticed a pattern. During periods of upwelling, when the current shifted and brought acidified water to the surface, he noticed that larval oysters died at higher rates. We put two or two together and came up with four. Hatcheries now have a machine called a berculator named after Burke Hales that monitors the acidity of the seawater coming to the hatchery and allows the manager to buffer the seawater by increasing saturation of aragonite. So the hatcheries are insulated, if you like, from acidified water arriving in the hatchery through upwelling. This was the first time that economic cost could be associated with ocean acidification and increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. In the past, people have been aware of the problem and had documented its effect on, say, coral reefs. But this was the first time that the legislatures in Oregon, as well as Congress in Washington, D.C., could be presented with a bill. OK, this is the bill. This is how much it costs when ocean acidification affects an industry here on the Oregon coast. 
Oyster larvae are, are very sensitive to the effects of ocean acidification. So they are an important indicator of ocean health. There's been a strong response to our research on OA that has led to further studies and policy making to address this global problem. Oysters are part of our West Coast culture, and so a potential loss of this iconic species would have a significant effect on our experiences of marine life. Acidification is not a problem that's just affecting oysters. It can also affect by other calcifying organisms in the marine environment that build shells. Your future and those of your children and grandchildren are going to be affected by decisions made now in regards to ocean acidification. Getting a better understanding of the effects of ocean acidification is a really important step towards fixing the problem.